Hello everyone, my name is Jojo. Welcome to my channel Joyroot Jojo. This is the second video on the Microsoft 365 tutorial series. In the first video, we have seen deploy and manage Microsoft 365, which was the first module in MS 102 exam. So in this particular module, we have seen how to create a tenant, uh, configure organization settings, including security, privacy, and organization profile. A few more things are still left out in this, like uh, uh, manage your tenant subscription in Microsoft 365, like configuring tenant level share settings on SharePoint and OneDrive. Uh, so all these areas we will be covering in this particular video. All right, manage our tenant subscription in Microsoft 365. So we will start from there in this video. Manage your tenant subscription in Microsoft 365. Maintaining minimum subscription requirement is essential for organization to remain functional, which means we should have minimum subscription requirement to for an organization to remain it functional. Purchasing an insufficient number of licenses can result implementation delays, while purchasing an excessive number of licenses can result in overspending. So all active and deprovisioned li licenses can be reviewed from Microsoft 365 admin center. So we could from the Microsoft 365 admin center, which is this particular page. From here, we can know all active and deprovision licenses can be viewed from here. In the left hand navigation pan, which is this is the left hand navigation pan uh, under under billing group licenses page on under subscription, you can view all your available licenses, assigned licenses, and account type. So all those details you will be able to see it here. All information about about an organization existing subscriptions, including billing and payment information, is available within this billing group. This group includes such as your products, licenses, billing and payment, billing accounts payment methods and billing notification. So we will see one by one. What is your products? What we have in your products? This page displays all the plans. This page displays all the plans purchased by an organization. So here you could see we have purchased some business premium plan and available licenses, uh, purchase quantity, everything you could see it here. It is possible to manage it from here. Then comes licenses. Then comes licenses this page provides a summary of the licenses that you have subscribed to or for each plan purchased by an organization including all the available license for each plan consider you have uh, multiple product that you have purchased here so here in the licenses you could see summary of the licenses that you have subscribed to each plan purchased for an organization including all the licenses for each plan could be visible here. Then comes bills and payment. So billing and payments. This page provides a history of all invoices charged to your organization along with the payments methods and billing profiles. All right, that is what comes under bills and payments. Then comes bills account. This page manage an organization purchasing relationship with Microsoft. Each billing account, contains defining information about the organization. For example, addresses, contact information, and any tax information that applies. All those billing account details are visible here. Then comes payment methods. Then comes the payment methods. This page enables an organization to define payment methods that it can use to pay for subscription. You can add your payment method here. Then billing notification, this page identifies who receives billing notification with an organization and how each billing statement is received. So this is all about managing your tenant subscription in Microsoft 365. So all that related to your tenant subscription comes under billing and you can manage it over here. All right, let's move on. So configuring the tenant level sharing settings for SharePoint and OneDrive is the next unit in this particular module. The, uh, this is a big module. We have a lot to cover in this particular module. MS 102, configure your Microsoft 365 tenant. 
As we are aware, SharePoint and OneDrive are two cloud-based platforms that allow us to store, share, and collaborate all files and folders in Microsoft 365. The external sharing features of SharePoint and OneDrive allow or let users in your organization to share content with people outside the organization. You can also use external sharing to share between license uses on multiple Microsoft 365 subscription if your organization has more than one subscription. This particular training unit focuses on how organization can change their organization level sharing settings. We, it, it, when it comes to SharePoint, we have uh, sharing settings in organization level and site level. So this particular unit focuses on organization level sharing settings to allow external sharing on any site you must allow it at organization level first one drive sharing settings can be the same as more restrictive than share sharepoint settings only global administrators and sharepoint administrators in microsoft 365 can change organization level sharing settings for sharepoint and one drive so to change the organization external SharePoint settings for SharePoint and OneDrive, you must navigate to sharing page of SharePoint Admin Center. So let us practically see how we can change the organization level external sharing settings. Change organization level SharePoint settings, you have to go to SharePoint Admin Center. SharePoint Admin Center, you can get it from Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And here you could see the Admin Centers. Here you select SharePoint. You click on this, that will land on this particular page. And here under policies you have sharing option so on sharing page that appears there are several sections of settings that you can configure like external sharing files and folders link then you have more external sharing settings um, then comes other settings here you have uh, then you have advanced settings for anyone links so we will check one by one First one, external sharing. This section of sharing page allows you to configure the overall settings of for your organization. So in the external sharing, we have multiple options here. So the first one is anyone. Anyone means allow user to share files and folders by using links. Let anyone who has the link access the files and folders without authenticating. So that is what meant by anyone. Then comes the next one. We select the next one, which is new and existing guest, which means require people who received invitation to sign in their work or school account or Microsoft uh, account or to provide a code to verify their identity. So this is what meant by new or existing guest. Then comes existing guest. Allow sharing only with the guests who are already in your directory. These guests might exist in your directory because they previously accepted sharing invitation. Here comes the least primacy one, which is only people in your organization. No external sharing allowed. Completely we are turning off the external sharing. So this is an overall about external sharing. Now comes files and folder links. The next section of sharing page is nothing but file and folder links. This section of the sharing page allow you to choose the option to show by default when a user create a sharing link. This setting specifies the default for your organization, but you can choose the different default link link type for a site. So we have three different uh, sharing options like for specific people, only people in your organization, anyone with a link. So all these three options are there. So we will specifically see what happens with specific people so this option you select this particular option most this is most restrictive and impetus broad internal sharing if you allow external sharing this option let users share with specific people outside the organization so the next option is nothing but only people in your organization if the link are forwarded they work for anyone in the organization so if you select this one, it works anyone with your organization. This option is best if your organization shares broadly, internally 
and very rarely shares externally. In that situation, you can select only people in your organization. Then comes anyone with the link. This option is available only if your external sharing settings is set to anyone. Forwarder links work internally and externally, but you cannot track who has access shared items or who access shared items. This option is best for friction-free sharing. If most files and folders in SharePoint and OneDrive are not sensitive. In such situation, we can select anyone with link. Now come some advanced settings for anyone links. This section of sharing page enable you to select expiration and permission option for anyone links. So we have link expiration. This link expires on this particular date or something you can select it. Then comes link permission. You can restrict anyone link so that they can only provide with few permission for files and folders. So that settings you can do it here. Then the last one is other settings. We have three other settings. Show owners and name of people who viewed their files in OneDrive. Let site owners choose to display the names of people who viewed, file, viewed files and pages in SharePoint. You short links or sharing files and folders. So these other settings also you can we have in the sharing page. So in overall, we have all the sharing settings for the organization level uh, is done over here. And each settings we have discussed right now. All right, let's move on. We are in the first module of MS 102 exam, which is configure your Microsoft 365 experience. In this, we have covered all these points and we have discussed configure tenant level sharing settings for SharePoint and OneDrive just now. Now we move to the next point, next unit, which is nothing but configure tenant level settings for Microsoft Teams. So let us discuss uh, channel level settings for Microsoft Teams. Say Microsoft 365 administrator, we can configure various organization level tenant settings for Microsoft Teams. These settings affect how users and guests can access and use Teams features and capabilities. The first settings is nothing but guest access. So guest, what guest access will do? It allow you to enable or disable guest access to Teams. Guests are external users who can participate in your team chat, calls, meetings, and channels, but have limited access to other resources. They can only participate in teams chat calls meetings and channels but have limited access to other resources you can also control which domain can have guest access in your organization and which team features are available to guest so to log into the teams admin center i can just practically show you where you can enable guest access so we are in the microsoft 365 admin center if you come come to admin center you have Team admin center here click on that that will lead you microsoft team admin center here under the left left blade under uses you have guest access you can enable guest access on or off so when you turn it on what happened when this is on people in your organization can invite guest users to access teams and channels in your organization if you turn this off guests cannot sign into your teams using their guest account so that you can uh, enable it here and we move to the next one team settings here under team setting it allow you to customize various various aspects of team such as uh, app setup policies meeting policies messaging policies the live event policies voice settings and device settings. as part of team settings let us discuss some major settings that you can enable it in teams admin center the first one is nothing but meeting policies you click on meeting policies you get some default meeting uh, settings here or you can add or create some uh, meeting policies for uh, you can customize the meeting policy for exam example uh, i create a customized meeting policy right now here and i name it as test policy and here uh, meeting and join lobby so this is the first one which i want to discuss with you Anonymous, anonymous users can join meeting. So what happens if you turn it on? When this is on, 
anyone can join teams meeting including teams users in other organization that are not on your allowed domain list so even if that user is not in part of your allowed domain list if this is turned on then during the meeting he can join if this is turned off no anonymous user can join in any meeting so only the people anonymous users if they want if some other organization users want to join to the meeting this is to be turned on and this is content sharing this is some settings related to your uh, screen sharing you can sh uh, if you not enable then users cannot share the screen or if it is and their screen then you can uh, uh, share the entire screen in the teams meeting who can present everyone can present people in my organization and guests can present only organization and co organization can send so here about the content sharing you have the settings here for the whiteboard collaborate animation and live share so all these settings comes under here then something related to record and transcription if you want to uh, record the meeting then this to be on otherwise you won't be able to record the session and here comes transcription and you can turn on your transcription here all right so there are a lot of settings for related to meeting uh, meeting policies that you can set it either you can edit the default policy which is available here or you can add a customized policy for our and you can create a customized policy and you can assign to certain groups here so that's about team settings and about the teams app allow you to manage the apps that users can access and use in teams in our teams we can integrate many of the applications so it allow you to manage the apps that users can access and use in teams you can view approve upload block or uninstall apps so those settings you can do it in the uh, teams admin center so if you uh, check each and every points then this session will be very lengthy so what i want to show you only only the important settings that impact in a organization now about the teams analytics and report which allow you to monitor and analyze the usage and performance of teams in your organization you can view various reports and dashboards such as teams usage activity report teams device usage report the teams live event usage report and the call quality dashboard so all these reports are available to view the report what you have to do you have to come in teams admin center come down here analytics and report you have usage report and reporting label uh, call quality dashboard so all those uh, reports comes under here so let us verify some reports what all comes under report you have all these options app usage report external domain activity teams device usage uh, teams webinar usage teams town hall you said you can explore it uh, once you what i suggest you create a test tenant and please explore all these options all right so i was just trying to get some teams usage report for last 7 days unfortunately as i do not uh, we do not have any data to show because we don't make any calls in this test tenant so the data is zero here in other ways you can get some teams usage data if it is a in the production environment we get the data here all right so this is all about configure the tenant level share settings for uh, microsoft teams all right the remaining we will discuss we have two more points here in the first module so that we will discuss in the next uh, uh, video i think that's enough for the day otherwise this uh, session will be very lengthy we'll meet in the other video till then goodbye